If it looks half decent, I'm having it. I have a lathe again. I'm a real engineer. <laughs> In this packed video, I'm going to reveal to you how much I paid for this bargain box for 280T. I'm going to give this three phase lathe a single phase conversion and tell you why it's much better than having a three phase supply. At the end of this video, I will reveal the weak spot with this lathe. But first of all, you can see I'm ripping all the guts out of this old three phase wiring. I'm going to fit it with some new switch gear. The new switch gear, which I'm very pleased with. I think you'll agree it fits reasonably nicely with the black gear knobs and uh, screw cutting knobs. This, this is the key. This is motor speed. This is the new VFD, a lovely little thing, OptiDrive, um, and it can do some quite cool features. And um, I've made something on the back, which is both sort of temporary and might become permanent. So it's actually a neat way of making the, um, the inverter. There's enough airflow here and so on, but uh, it could easily come up and off like that. You see those two bolts and then be put on the wall. So for the time being, I'm not going to be working this thing hard. Uh, that is where it's going to stay. And now I can reassemble the thing. I have to give credit to another YouTube channel, Tweed Garage. He did a video on a box for 280T with an OptiDrive inverter. And I have to say, he helped me a lot with this. I basically copied everything he's done. Uh, so go ahead and check that out if you're into lathes. He's actually got a very interesting channel with lots of engineering stuff on it. The video with the lathe uh, is the same as mine with the same inverter, but in a bit more detail. It's uh, called A New Lathe in Town on the Tweed Garage channel. Thanks, Tweed Garage. Mains on, forward, speed, straight into reverse, the lead screw for thread cutting that is the slowest speed <laughs> the slowest gear and the slowest the motor will turn I think you'll all agree that that is a lovely lovely bit of kit so I've been looking for something metric something smaller something which could spin faster because the uh, the old Colchester could only do 800 rpm uh, something I could put DROs on and a quick change tool post and then suddenly, last night, onto Face Bay pops this box for 280T, which is a lovely machine. So this is one of the lathes I never imagined I'd afford. Um, it's more like a machine I've used at university. And you can see the price there. And then this one came up for 1200 And I sort of double, double take and thought about it for an hour and then thought, no, I'm looking at gift horse in the mouth here. So I went off and got it. This is like... Pretty sure this is massively underpriced. Go for a thousand. <laughs> There's loads of stuff. Should be 12 millimeters uh, in the size square, and it should take a CCM T06 tip. So those are all my cutting tools, and those are the spare tips. This is where I cheaped out. At just £170 for the chuck instead of 600 for a Pratt, Pratt and Bernard one. Let me first show you why I want to renew this chuck. What I have here is an old wrist pin or gudgeon pin. This makes an excellent test piece for seeing run out in the chuck. But you can see here, there's a gap. And to show you that, I can wobble it. So contact has been made at the back of the jaws, but the front is still loose. You can see that on camera. 35, yeah, so 0.35 of a millimeter run out. So of course you can adjust it. There we go, so it's getting a lot better, look.
There we go, not bad. But honestly, I've lived with a terrible chuck for a long time, and I want it better than that. So it's a D13 cam lock. These are the three posts, and it grabs it in there. They get pulled in, and it sits centrally on that tapered bore there. If you've often thought you might want a lathe one day, let me know in the comments and I'll try and talk you into it. <laughs> it's one of those tools. You don't know how useful it is until you've got one. There you go, so you can see it for the first time just like me. That's very good. To start with, that's very good. So I'm seeing 0 0.04 of a millimeter. And I haven't done anything except chuck it in there. That's really, that's really pleasing. So it's just a tiny bit over two thou uh, run out, which I'm so pleased with. That's fantastic. So I will keep that as a test piece, keep it oiled and keep a check on things. That's a great success. The next thing to check now is when I bring a drill, a centre drill up to drill the end of a working piece, which you can see is in there, like, will it find the centre or will it wander? Which is what I'm quite used to with my old, very worn out lathe. So, obviously I want to see no wobble. Oh, that's beautiful! No wobble at all. Oh, that's so nice. Absolutely straight. Beautiful. Right, so let's make the first cut with this machine. I have no idea of cutting speeds, but I would guess fairly high because I'm on a pretty small part. Let's give it a go in a bit. rough let's put as fast as I can go let's slow feed down I can't that's on the slowest that goes too interesting so maybe I've taken too much of a bite out let's take a bit less yeah it's rough back to where I was really don't know what I'm doing <laughs> But you know what, this is what I wanted. I can make parts. This is a functional thing, accurately cut, just not a great finish. So just a close up on that then. You can see it's not great. So as you can see, to reveal the one problem with this lathe, <laughs> it's me, the operator. I've got a lot of learning to do, but I know now I cannot blame my tools. Hopefully at some point I'll learn how to give a good surface finish when I'm turning parts in this lovely lathe. Thank you so much for watching, folks.